You want to start out from when I was set, huh? We're ready to go here. So, yeah, start at the beginning. When, where were you born? When? Oh yeah. Okay. Was it running? Oh boy. <laughs> All right, we're good to go. Good to go. Okay. Yep. So, where it. were you born? I don't know any of this. Well, I like it, like everybody knows. My name is Ray William Wright. And I was born in Caseville, Utah, and uh, on a little farm on Mutton Hollow Road, uh, in a two-room home. Uh, we, uh, my my parents were William J. Wright and Elder Perkins Wright, and uh, I had. Uh, uh, um, I've got to read here. <laughs> okay. uh, we, I had three brothers and four sisters. And now, uh, one brother and one sister died. Uh, real well, it was real young, less than a year old. And you're, are you the oldest? And uh, my f sister, uh, my sister Fern was the oldest. Uh, Faye was the second, and then I was uh, I was uh, third. And then from there, I went to uh, uh, Wanda, and then uh, I think Fred was born in there, but he's the one that died. And then Marjorie was right after him, and. And then uh, after that, uh, see, uh, it was Roy and then D. So that was the whole family, and uh, we lived in this little two-room home with no running water inside, no electricity, and uh, no bathroom. Of course, <laughs> it was outside. They had the old two holers outside, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that. Just outside. The outhouses. Oh, the outhouse, you know. That's enough. <laughs> so you had a two holer, huh? Well, that's a that. <laughs> you had to with that big of a family. Yeah, with huh? that big a family. You had to go two at a time, you know. <laughs> 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 oh, there's something in there. <laughs> oh, I want to know these things. That's, that's okay. good. <laughs> I I attended school at uh, Kaysville Elementary, and uh, uh, th there at that time they went eight eight grades in that in elementary, and then uh, and then they had three years of high school. They didn't have the uh, junior highs at that time, but when I got to the eighth grade, then they built the new junior high in Clearfield. And I uh, was a, we was a, our class was the first to attend that new junior high at Clearfield, and uh, and then uh, from there, uh, we was for our class was first to graduate naturally, and, and then uh, we went from there to Davis, and I spent the other three years of my education there at Davis. So. It's Two years of the junior high, and then you one year. One year. One year. Do you so forgot to tell how bad you were in elementary school. Oh yes, I forgot to tell them. Naughty, you naughty boy. Well, I would go back to that, dear. <laughs> so when you were at high school, so in high school, did you run well, track? when I was when I was younger. Yeah, when I was younger. And going to grade school, our road on Mutton Hollow Road was wasn't paved at that time, and and it was had dips in it, and uh, and it it'd blow over, and and a lot of times we couldn't get to school because of uh, of the snow snow banks and things, and for about well two or three years, my 
a f grandfather hooked these uh, horses to a bobsleigh and hauled all the kids that lived on Mutton Hollow oh, Road fun. to school in a bobsleigh. Really? That was quite an experience. It was really something. It was, I, th I quite enjoyed it. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, when the roads would get slick uh, like that and the cars would beat it down and it would just be just like ice and because uh, it wasn't paved or anything and it just and we'd get our sleighs and we could go from the mountain road on US 89 up there it used to be, it used to be call it the mountain road anyway mm -hmm. and then we went from there clear to the Bamberger tracks sometimes which is about two and a half miles <laughs> we'd have to walk clear back home in that cold <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> we wonder whether it was worth it or not. That nice ride we had, <laughs> but uh, it was quite a, an experience. Really, all the way down. Huh? Yeah. yeah right. uh, we. Me and my sisters helped, tried to help Dad on the farm quite a bit, and I tried to keep up with him as fast, much as I could, but he was too hard a worker. I, I just couldn't keep up with him, and, and he was quite a guy. And uh, we we done pretty good until he got his arm hurt, uh, hooked by a bull and tore out his muscle in his left arm. and. Uh, me and he, we had cows to milk and, and to feed and to take care of and all the a pig or two and to feed and do all that. We had to do all that while while he was down with that bad arm. And me and my sisters done that. I'd done most of the milking because my sister didn't know how very good. And, uh, and then Dad, as soon as he got where he'd go, he'd try with one arm to do it. And, and uh, but it was quite an experience to have to take care of the farm and everything like that from when we was that young. And How old we were was, you, do you think? I think we was around, uh, oh, 12 or 13, still yeah. in still in grade school, because we went to the eighth grade at there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, well, how did, it, how did it happen that he got his arm? He uh, was, had to go take a cow over to the bull, over to, uh, from, for this Ole Layton that he was working for. And it was to a neighbor's place. I can't remember the guy's name now, but anyway, he w went in to set it up and the bull was loose and it got through and he tried to get out of the way, but it hooked him in the arm and tore his muscle right out. Mm. They told him he might never use his arm again, but they sewed her back together, and he worked and worked at it. Boy, you could see the sweat on his face, and really? he really. But he got it. He got it back to where he could use it again, and he was well, that's good. not good. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Like when I like when I was in elementary school, you know, all the time I was in there, I was, I was in trouble. A lot of the time, because I, was, I, I, I thought we was kind of poor as a family, you know, and and uh, sometimes I'd go with raggedy clothes, and the kids make fun of me. So naturally, I got to be considered one of the toughest kids in school, because I always defended myself, you know, and uh, I'd get in trouble and hitting somebody or doing something, and I had to go to the principal's office and. <laughs> Mm. My uh, my sister was always real unhappy because she had to go in and get me out <laughs> and uh, and report me to dad, of course, where I got <laughs> got uh, disciplined. <laughs> uh -huh. Anyway, that's the story of my <laughs> about uh, my grade school. When I started going to junior high, uh, when I went the one year out there, I. Uh, got kind of interested in track and so I uh, signed up for the junior pentathlon that they had out there which is uh, 
the pentathlon is is uh, quite a few different events. You know, you have to uh, throw the throw the uh, javelin. You had to high jump and broad jump, and uh, and then uh, you had to run the uh, hundred yard dash and the quarter mile. Hmm. And so there was, I think, one other thing that we had to do. Anyway, during that time, I pulled a ligament in my leg, and uh, I still tried to compete, and I really ruined it bad for a while there. Really? But uh, I did come in third in the school behind uh, Lyman Clark and Ted Harris. They were the two that beat me. But I really believe I could have uh, done better if I hadn't uh, had that problem with my leg. But anyway, it gave me enough incentive that when I went to high school, uh, I wanted to sign up for all the sports I could, and and uh, I uh, I did do pretty fair there. I uh, run the half mile and won my run my letter in track, run my letter in uh, in. Uh, Boxing. At that time, they had boxing at school, and and uh, I had to. I won my letter in in wrestling. Anyway, but uh, at that boxing deal, they af right after, well, during the time I was boxing, uh, this Del Zizinger, uh, a big, uh, he was a heavyweight, a heavier guy. Anyway, he got hit hard and uh, had a, and I, later on he, he died from a head injury. So uh, shortly after that, the high schools uh, cut this boxing out for the high schools as a, as a major sport. So, but at that time I was down there, we had, I'd, I'd done pretty good in all of them. I in, enjoyed it. Cool. Mm -hmm. So. You said one time that you went to the, you went to the state meets and ran there. Yes, I in my track track. That's why I won my letter. I had to go to the state meet to get my before they would give you your letter. You know, oh. I went to state meet, but I got boxed in and come in. I think well, way down, but I come third in the region and cool and uh, and I uh, didn't do too good in state. I. And wasn't prepared for it. <laughs> it's a higher uh, competition going, don't they? Yeah. And then they, like I say, they bo boxed me in and I couldn't get out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Anyway, let's see now. Where was I at here? Where were I? Well, in the, about the last year of my high school, I I had enough credits uh, right at the end. Well, they give me a little credit for going. I was uh, I was going to wanting to take a mechanic learner course up to the uh, Utah State University up to Logan as a mechanic learner course, and and uh, they give me part part of my credit for my last year. To if I I left in February to go up there mm -hmm. to. Uh, and uh, that was quite an experience to go up there and batch it up there. I had to batch it up there for for about uh, three and a half months or something like that, four months. And uh, with my friend Forrest Green, and uh, and when we left, it, when we got through up there, well, we they assigned us a job at Hill Air Force Base, and uh, I was there for. A, just a month or so, and then they told me I'd be drafted right away if I didn't want to go down and join up. So I went and joined. Me and Forrest both went to Fort Douglas and joined joined the service. And uh, he he says he didn't he didn't want to he wanted to be on a ship. He wanted to be in the Navy. So he joined the Navy, and. Uh, I said, no, you ain't going to get me on a ship. <laughs> I joined the Air Force and 
I think that was the wisest decision I ever made because later on his ship was blew out from under him and he was killed and mm -hmm. never come back from the service. And I was lucky I got, I joined the Air Force and, and uh, the day after I had to report at Fort Douglas we shipped out, shipped out to uh, San Antonio, Texas, Kelly Field. And that's where I took my started to my started my basic training. <coughs> and uh, from and uh, while I was there, you know, we was marching in the hot sun and it was our clothes we'd come back in and they'd almost stand up by themselves and <laughs> and uh, boy, they would just so much salt come out of your system. <laughs> I I was uh, the one day we was out getting her. We had to get our shots and everything. I was trying to rush us through to get us to. They needed us overseas, and anyway, they rushed us through this thing, and uh, we'd walk. We had our shots and was out marching, and I had come in tired and sweaty, and and I had. Uh, sauerkraut and weenies for supper, mm -hmm. and I gorged myself on them, and I got so sick they had to take me to the hospital, <laughs> pump my stomach, they said oh, I had yeah. food poisoning and heat prostration. <laughs> really? <laughs> it was it was terrible. I tell you, I, I was about a week here that I just did. I was just really out of it. <laughs> really, that long? Mm -hmm. Week. And uh, then uh, right in the middle of our basic. They said they needed some mechanics overseas, and uh, and uh, we hadn't finished our basic, and that we'd have to finish it over there with with whoever we went, you know, and, uh, and so at the time they we didn't know where we was going to go. Anyway, they cut our cut our training short, and and uh, we. Uh, and uh, they had promised us, you know, that uh, we'd get a furlough home before we sent us overseas. That promise was gone by, and it was gone. They, really? they, they needed us, so that was gone. We had to just go straight. We boarded the train and headed right out for for Camp Kilmer, New Jersey. We went by train all the way to Camp Kilmer, New Jersey. And uh, from there, we bought on the 24th of July. See, I went in in June, uh, 15th of June, I think it was, or something like that. And uh, 24th of July, we was on uh, aboard the Queen Mary, going overseas. The first night, it was so crowded, I had to sleep on a stairwell. Was that, that was many so people? so crowded. We had that big, they had so many people going over there, you couldn't believe it. And uh, I guess in, anyway, we we thought, boy, here we are. We issued us our warm weather gear, you know, like so. We figured, boy, we're going to either South Africa or some warm climate. There we ended up over in Scotland. Eight days later, we was over in Scotland. They weaved around. It's usually a five-day trip for the Queen Mary, and it took us eight days to get there. They had to weave around for the submarines, different places, and really? and uh, took us eight days, and we ended up in Scotland. And from you, there, they was the ship all by itself, or was it in a convoy? No, it was too fast for the other ships, so they could they it was it was by itself. Uh, all the other others that were slower had convoys, went in convoys, mm -hmm. but ours. Uh, they said it was too fast to ship for the convoys. Huh. We, they just done their weaving and their thing, and and we uh, we got to Scotland, and then uh, from there we went by truck down to Warrington, England, <coughs> and, and there and there's where I was stationed most of the time. I was in England. Uh, we was assigned at BAD. Base Air Depot 1, Site 3 at uh, at Warrington, and uh, they 
but it's immediately your work, repair, completely repairing engines that had been damaged in, in their flights across. So, how did, did you already have the training for aircraft mechanic? Yes. Uh, that's where I went to Logan to was aircraft my, mechanic. Was aircraft stuff. mechanic. Well, I was up there more in elect electricity at that time, mm -hmm. an electric a, as an electrician, aircraft electrician. Uh -huh. But uh, then uh, they needed they needed more to do with the complete engine, so we took our training right over there, and we done it. While we was there, they broke us in, tearing them down, and putting them back together. And, and some of them would come in with shells still in them, and we had to be awful careful to, uh, to uh, some of them to, they wouldn't explode and things like that. Some of the things, some of the things that was in them, you couldn't couldn't wouldn't, wouldn't believe the how bad them engines were shot up, and they expected us to repair them. <laughs> Boy, we had to practically rebuild them. You're a magician, huh? <laughs> Yeah, we practically had to rebuild them. Hmm. Anyway, while I was there at England and doing this, all this uh, engine repair, and we, in the evenings and the weekends we done our basic training, crawling in the mud with the English doing our basic training. <laughs> oh, it was a miserable, miserable time, miserable time. Yeah. So work all day and then do training yeah. on the weekends, huh? When when we had time, we didn't have work as too many hours. But when we'd be out there training and doing our basic training, finishing our basic, mm -hmm. doing our shooting and all the stuff, making sure we was capable of handling ourselves. <laughs> uh. Yeah, yeah. When uh, our main worries over there were like people infiltrating, getting into in there and doing damage to things and we had a few little instances like that but uh, we had pretty good guard system around and and uh, that, that was one of our main worries but a lot of the others were the uh, not the first little while I was there but just shortly after they had the buzz bombs and the V2 rockets and uh, the buzz bombs you could hear them coming and you could hit, and you'd be prepared for them, and then they'd shut off, and then you'd worry where they was going to hit. But the V2 rockets, they would hit, and you'd explode before you even knew they was coming, because they would just, they just come and hit. Wow! You couldn't hear them coming. You couldn't, didn't give you any warning. So it was a pretty, pretty scary time at sometimes there, but but we got our job done. Got the. Well, you told me one time that you had one come close. What happened then? Yeah, this this was on one of my trips to London uh, that we had to go down and pick up some supplies and stuff. And it was just outside of London, and we was uh, me and my friend was uh, walking along the river by the river there, and one exploded across the river, and it and it blew us right off our feet, and knocked us down, hurt my friend real bad. He had to go in. To, he hurt, but I got I, I lucked out again. I was in the right place at the right time, hmm. and uh, oh, I, there was a few times that they hit, even up where we was up uh, around our base. But most of the bombing and everything was done at the southern southern end of England, down around London and around that area. But we did get some up there. But and how powerful were these bombs? Oh man, I'll tell you. Like I say, it was uh, it was probably a uh, hundred yards wide uh, across the river, and it landed maybe another twenty-five the other side of that, and it blew us clear down mm -hmm. across the river there. So you can tell it was pretty strong explosions. Hmm. Pretty strong. They would take out. Uh, oh, maybe a quarter of a block. Wow, at one time. At, at a time when they'd hit, you know. That's why they, they'd done a lot of damage down around the, in the southern part. And uh, we was lucky. We lived, we we were housed in the Na Nissan huts. 
and there they were kind of camouflaged on the top. You couldn't hardly tell that they were huts, you know, if he was in the air, because I flew over there a few times, and and you couldn't even hardly tell where they was. So it was quite a. But I guess they had their intelligence from over there. It wasn't aircraft that they were sending. They were sending the rockets and everything and trying to hit specific areas and hitting things. And like I say, I think they knew we was in that area because they come, some come pretty close well, quite a few times. And, uh, and while I was, uh, while I was there, I, I, uh, they had the USO come around, and uh, they was uh, they formed a boxing club, and uh, they all the different bases all over England uh, made made uh, had a boxing club on each one of their bases, and to try to entertain the troops, or try to do something to kind of keep them occupied and keep them things. So I joined the boxing. And I enjoyed that quite a bit because I got to travel a lot. I got to go to the different bases to, to box. And, and then uh, we had a big tournament down in London later on. And Did you tell me once you got to eat better because you were in London? Yeah, that's, why, that's why I joined it. <laughs> 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 that's why I joined it because uh, they fed us. After we'd get through fighting, we'd be eating steak and the others would be eating K and C rations and <coughs> and some of the other kind of food that they had here. Brussels sprouts and Brussels sprouts and beans like the English. That's what they liked over there. Mm. Oh. Huh. Yeah. That's on the sh on the ship going over. That's what we lived on, Brussels sprouts and beans. Uh -oh. oh, that was terrible. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, I can't stand Brussels sprouts anyway. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> so, did um, when you were boxing, you, did they do it in different weight classes? Or? Oh yes, oh yes. Yeah, we had their different weight classes, and we had, uh, and it was it was quite fair. And unless you got in a thing and you didn't have an opponent, then sometimes they'd put you within a little higher one or mm -hmm. something. But and you get your plow cleaned, you know, but. <laughs> But uh, normally I'd, I'd done pretty good and we had a lot of fun at it. And, uh, Did they have it with the official rings and the bell and the time? Oh, yes. That? It was actually a thing. They had a, this one, uh, uh, we had to even had the uh, pros come in uh, uh, from this Aaron Con and uh, Billy Con, you know Billy Con that, used, that fought uh, uh, Joe Lewis and, oh. and some of them. He was he even come over there and and they had him put on an exhibition with one of our heavyweights there, but it was just an exhibition. They didn't want to because he was too good, you know. Huh. And uh, but during that time, that's when I was boxing, and we had a lot of celebrities come over there on a lot of different fighters. I had a list of them one time, but I don't know whatever happened to it. But. Huh. Now you said you went flying a few times. Yes, uh, shortly, shortly after I, uh, uh, after, before the war ended, just shortly before it ended, they assigned me to a uh, 325th Troop Carrier Squadron. And uh, then I got, and then I was assistant crew chief, and. When the crew chief was off a lot of the time, he had other duties. I, I got to sometimes fly with the crew, and, and uh, it was quite interesting. I got to, I got to fly quite a bit, and uh, and we had a few incidents that happened along the line. But what did any time you get scary incidences or? Oh yeah, we had a few times. One time we had. A, Hit a flock of birds and and uh, bender props. And we figured uh, he, f the pilot figured it was, it was we ought to get out of there. So, but the plane didn't crash. But uh, 
but he did let us make us bail out. So two of us bailed out, me and, and the other bit, and then the pilot run, brought it on in. Really? But, so what kind of planes was the troop carriers? Were like C we was in C-47s. But mm -hmm. they had C-46s and C-47s, but we had we were assigned to C-47. And uh, we had to do all the maintenance on it. E even if the aircraft got damaged, we had to repair the skin. We had to do the do the ailerons, the tails, the <laughs> anything that happened to be on it. We had to do all the work on them. So you had and, to uh, parachute out. Huh? You had to parachute out of yeah, the plane, time, and then did they send a jeep to pick you up? Oh, we, we had people come get us real quick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it, uh, and then uh, right around that time, uh, just after, and then shortly after that, the war, they said, was over. You know, the war was about, just about over anyway. They figured it was going to be an armistice, and so they assigned our, uh, this 325th Troop Carrier Squadron to a, to a base in, in uh, Germany. And so all of us packed up and headed out by truck to the, and went across the English Channel and boat and entered La Havre, France. And from there, uh, they put us on boxcars. They just loaded us on boxcars that was open and some of them closed, but a lot of them open. And, uh, uh, they called them the old 40 and 8, like they used to have. <laughs> and uh, I don't know why, I guess they used to call it that here in the United States because of the, uh, the they had 40 soldiers and eight donkeys they put on there. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, the, but they called them the old 40 and 8s over there because it was about like that. We had to stop every, on the way, it took us about five days to get to Reims and Reims, France, and and uh, on the way we'd just stop and have our sea rations. Or, uh, they'd cook up sea rations once once a day. The rest of the time we had to live on our K rations, which is the ones that's just portable. You know, we didn't have to cook them or anything. And uh, and we got but anyway we got to Reims, and then from there we went truck to to uh, Ansbach, Germany. Is that uh, south or north? Or? That's way up close to, close to uh, Germany. I mean, close to where you would go into Russia. There, we're up by Nuremberg. Mm. That's the closest big city is, is Nuremberg, which is about 50 miles, I guess, from there. And uh, from there, we was uh, army of occupation. How long did you have to stay there? I had to stay there till, till uh, let's see, until about April of uh, 46. So how many years were you gone? Two years, nine months, and 21 days. <laughs> <laughs> And you didn't get to go home at all during that I can time. tell you, yeah, if you want. <laughs> you didn't get to go home at all during Not that time? one day at home and all that time. And all that time. And I, and when I got back to Fort Douglas, I was just, got discharged. And there, from there, I went home. And I, I never, never was, had a furlough home at all the time I was in the service. But I was lucky to be in a, an area I didn't get, I didn't have to battle hand to hand with, with the enemy. And yeah. You got sick so you couldn't come home. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, I missed my, missed my date to coming home by, I had uh, real, real bad pains in the stomach and they said I had appendicitis. So they took me to the uh, Nuremberg Hospital and Missed my departure time. Oh man! Well, the whole rest of my crew got to go home straight home. Got to go 
got to fly part of the way, and man, I had to go by train, by truck, by <laughs> boat. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> After having surgery, huh? Yeah, just for going in there. And I didn't never have my appendix taken out. They oh, didn't really? want to do it when I got there. They said that uh, they thought it thought it would last till I got to the states, and they uh, give me a whole bunch of medication, and uh, they uh, said it was close enough. It was, my white blood count or whatever it was was down enough that I thought they I could last till I got to the states, and they didn't have the facilities to do as good a job there. And I got back to the States and everything was fine. I never did. I don't think I ever had it operated on. <laughs> wow. All that, and I missed my thing to go home. Mm. <laughs> anyway, on the way, on the way when we boarded the ship from La Havre to coming home, we boarded the USS, USS Lejeune. Lejeune. Okay. Which is... Uh, which was a converted German ship, and uh, it was it was a really a small outfit, and it took us about 14 days to get home with that. And uh, we went straight through, and it took us about 14 days. But we did run into a little rough weather, and and then, like I say, it was crowded. We was crowded on them, and. Uh, we had to spend every other night on board, on on deck, and next time down below, and that was a long 14 days, <laughs> riding that little tub over there. Anyway, we landed at New York Harbor again and went back through Camp Kilmer, New Jersey, and and, uh, and from there to they shipped us by rail to Salt Lake City. And how old were you at that time? I was uh, about twenty. Let's see. I turned nineteen when I was in when I was in Texas. My June June thirtieth, my birthday, which is uh, and uh, I June, turned <coughs> nineteen when I was in Texas, taking my basic. Wow. So and you're only when you got home. You're so only twenty one. Huh? So I was about twenty two. Yeah, about 21. I was about, yeah, yeah that's right, that's about right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we went to Fort Douglas, they got our discharge and went home. Really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank goodness, that was over. <laughs> Don't you go right back to work at Hillfield? Or? <laughs> then, uh, when I got home, I I went to Hillfield and they, uh, and uh, I, they offered me a job, but uh, at that time they was laying off quite a few, and I could see down the line it didn't look like it would be good for me, so I didn't, they didn't accept it. I went down to the Navy base and hi hired in down to the Navy base. As, uh, as uh, I started out down there as, as a forklift operator, and uh, I worked down there for about 10 10, 12 years down to oh, really? Supply Depot. Right here at the Freeport Center? Yeah, at the Freeport Center. Huh? Hmm. And, and then uh, when they decided they wanted to close up, I was a little ahead of them, so I, moved, I went ahead and got my job back up to Hillfield, got another job up to Hillfield. In, but in that time, I went in as, uh, as in scheduling or into uh, parts chasing in, in uh, up in the maintenance department. Hmm. Yeah. And, uh, that was uh, that was quite a quite an interesting deal from tra transferring from the navy up there because I didn't uh, know anybody, <laughs> didn't know anything, and I had to start all from scratch practically. <laughs> but I figured they was going to lay off down there. I better get out of there. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So was it all working for the federal government in both places? Yes. Uh -huh. wow. So they just transferred my time and all of it went across oh, there. Good. And like I say, I worked in uh, the wheels and brakes doing their parts chasing. And then uh, I got transferred over to 
production manager and in, in, into uh, as, as, uh, not in production management, and into uh, scheduling, into in uh, the struts and wheels and struts, and uh, I got uh, working along there for a while, and then I moved into the hydraulics, mm -hmm. hydraulic area, and uh, from there, uh, and that's where I run it. Oh, I didn't didn't mention that. Uh, back where I met Marie and everything. Didn't yeah, it? we got to go back there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I met uh, I met Marie uh, when I got back from the service uh, uh, through a friend of mine uh, that me and him worked worked at Lagoon part time as a just as part time job while we was working. Uh, well, I worked at the Navy base, and, and uh, I met met Marie. And uh, shortly after that, uh, next year, around next spring, we was married. And uh, so, it, was it a blind date kind of thing, or? Yeah, it was kind of a blind date. Well, I met her for the first time. I went with went with uh, I think James Rasmussen. I think was his name. He was my friend, and. We just run around quite a bit together, and he he knew her, and he introduced me to her, mm -hmm. and then James went with her friend, uh, and uh, we double dated a few times, and then we. Uh, and so how old you, at that point you were? Twenty-two, twenty-three. How was twenty-two? When we got married, and, and so I was. How old was Marie? Uh, sixteen, I think. Seventeen. Really? Young, huh? Six, seventeen, probably. Had she graduated from high school? Nope. Did she? So I don't even know this. Did she graduate from high school, or did she get married and forget school? I don't think she ever finished, did she? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, wow. Nope. I, know I, I don't thought think she ever for finished. Year one yearbook Red gave to me or something huh. that yeah. um, mm -hmm. they was writing yeah. to her Mrs. Wright. So, so. so I don't think she ever pretty young. Ever. You been you be married now. Anyway, <laughs> she wanted to get married and so and I guess that's I did too. So I was been away from home a long time. And, yeah. And okay. So where did you live then? We lived at uh, in uh, uh, in Layton, down in uh, Victory Park, it's just over back at the elementary school, in on Gentile, just the other side of Gentile, mm -hmm. and we lived in in there for for quite a few years, and then uh, then uh, we had, I think, two kids at that time that when when we were there, but oh, sure. we had three because. I, I forgot who we had. Jerry, Bob, and Joanne? Jerry, Bob, and Joanne, I think, at that time, yeah. Uh -huh. And, then, and then, we, then we moved to to Roy and down at, at 5861 South, 2600 West. Oh, I wow, you remember the address? I remember that. <laughs> next to, next to the That's a long time ago. <laughs> It's funny how you remember things, huh? Mm -hmm. Next to Wayne and Shirley yeah. Smith. By Shirley Smith, by Wayne and Shirley Smith, yeah. And we lived there for quite a few years. I can't remember how many, but and then uh, later on from there we moved to uh, out to uh, Fort, uh, past 4400 there, didn't we? Yeah, over by North Park. On a split level home out there. Mm-hmm. I started school at North Park, so we yeah, at so least you lived to that until uh -huh. I was kinder, just before kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So you must have been, yeah. So I, I can't remember just the dates, but we lived out there for quite a while. I don't know if you remember, um, I was having a birthday party in the carport or something, and we, there was a rattlesnake in the yard. Oh, yes. 
I remember I walked out, walked out and there was the back door and there the rattlesnake was curled up right there by the porch. Tell them what you did. <laughs> I chopped his head off. <laughs> After you played with it for a little while. Well, yeah. <laughs> The shovel, scared me to death. Yeah, I jumped in and buried it out in the backyard. <laughs> After I played with it for a while. Had everybody screaming, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty dangerous monkey around with rattlesnakes. <laughs> but I'm surprised that it got up there. But I guess at that time they were working along the tracks down there and had a lot of piled up uh, them uh, timbers and things that they used. And I guess they stirred it all up and I sent them up into our uh, housing areas up there. But I heard that there was about three different ones that found rattlesnakes around, so there must have been quite a nest of them down there. Well, you probably grew up having rattlesnakes in yeah. your neighborhood and stuff. I'll say. <laughs> yes, I'll say. So the two-room house that you grew up on, Mutton Hall, was that the one that Grandpa was still living in? Yes, it would have been added on to. And yeah. But it's it was still, still, still that same, the same spot. home. Uh -huh. Still that same home, yeah. yeah. But it's tore down now. Yeah. All gone. Yeah. All new housing up there. You wouldn't even know Mutton Hollow Road anymore up there. It's so. completely different. Yeah. Uh-huh. <coughs> well, anyway, after I got up to up to have to go into maintenance up there and went to working on my on on my other job over there in production management. I mean, in over in uh, scheduling. Then I met uh, Darlene over there. She was uh, working in the office. Yeah, but you had your ass up first. And uh, oh, before I met you, didn't I? I had my big car accident. Uh huh. Tell us about it. Where, was, where did that happen? That happened on Weaver Canyon. I was uh, got through working at uh, American Building Maintenance uh, part-time, and uh, I was going to meet a friend of mine up to, uh, up in, uh, uh, hmm. anyway, just north of, North of Morgan, uh, on that place up there. Anyway, I was going to meet him up there and go fishing. I had my own fishing stuff in the trunk, and I was going to go up there and go fishing. And forget everything, you know. <laughs> was it Weber Canyon or Ogden Canyon? It was Weber Canyon. Oh, okay. It was up just before you got, you know where the old wheel used to be around on the old road there? Yeah. That was for your time, I guess. Yeah, probably. Anyway, it was just before I got to there. You know where the Trapper's Loop is now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just the first canal that crossed the road just west of that was where I hit, got, I hit. I went to sleep and drifted across the road and hit the embankment head on on the opposite side of the road. Really? How long were you in the hospital? And not only that, but they charged me to repair that embankment. <laughs> <laughs> How long were you in the hospital? I was in the hospital about, uh, oh, I think four or five months, I think. Really? That long? Yes. They, really? They'd crushed my chest and lost my eye and crushed my chest and I thought thought maybe the... What th were you driving? Uh, I bought, we'd, just about uh, six months ahead of that, we'd bought a new... Uh, uh, I can't remember what the heck. Right now, I, I, well, it, it's a, it's a, it's a Mercury, not the Monterey, but the one just below it. Um, the Mercury. Huh? Mercury, Mercury Meteor. They quit uh, making it, uh -huh. and it was a beautiful turquoise color, and, uh, and uh, I. Th I hadn't had many miles on it, and I think we took one trip to California in it, and that's about about the size of it. But <laughs> other than other than that, we and I it was in beautiful shape, and I totaled it out. 
Almost told him myself. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like. <laughs> anyway, that's a. I remember going to the hospital and they wouldn't let us go in and see you. Uh -huh. So we'd sit out on the grass and you'd go <coughs> to the window and wave at us. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't let kids in there at that time, would they? Mm -mm. Uh-uh, they sure wouldn't. Yeah. So you crushed your chest, hit your face, so it lost your eye because this side of your yeah. face was crushed? Yeah, I lost it, the horn ring. At that time they had horn rings on uh -huh. them, and that horn ring broke, snapped up, and it gouged my eye out. Oh. And uh, and uh, like I say, it crushed my chest, and that's what they worried about most. Uh, they knew they could fix the eye socket, fix that. But I, it, I tore, my, tore my nose off and all that stuff, you know. Really? And I had to rebuild that. And it, so I was quite a mess. I was quite a mess. I had to do in back in quite a few times for different uh, surgeries just, just to try to make it look halfway decent. Mm. But it was it was a bad deal. Yeah, you know? sounds like it. Now what else do I forget? Did or forget there? Hey, you forgot your girlfriend's name, man. But I guess that's okay. My wife. <laughs> <laughs> but that's anyway. <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, me and me and uh, me and Marie later divorced, and uh, and while I was working at Hiller, I met uh, Darlene, and uh, and uh, I didn't know him when they had that accident. No, yeah, I knew about him, but I didn't uh -huh. know him until after the yeah. accident and everything. And then we got together and went bowling together every week. <laughs> Yeah, really? we started bowling together, didn't we? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, even before we were married. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for the yes, we started bowling together. And, so, and then it wasn't about a year or so, and then we got married. What year was that? April 5th, 1968. April, <laughs> April 5th, 19. <laughs> so you're, you're coming up on how many years? 40 years? Yeah, April 5th is over. <laughs> it's getting up there. Yeah. So you're 39 yeah, years? 36, so we're 38. 38. Is that right? 68? No, 39. Because next year will be 40, right? Because this is 07. So you're in 39 Either years. 39. 38 or 39. Okay. <laughs> anyway, you're it's getting, getting there. up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good for a second marriage, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we were married April 5th, 1968, it says here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and between me and Darlene, we had two children. And uh, between me and Marie, we had, uh, we had what, six? Seven. 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 Oh, yeah, counting yeah. Jerry, yeah. yeah. And then uh, five. Five and two. Well, so, well, like five with that, with mom, yeah, and, then, and then the two. So yeah. a total of seven. Seven. So I had seven children all together. Twelve. Uh -huh. Jerry died. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, yeah, I've got uh, seven. Yeah, I had seven children. Yeah, and uh, one's deceased. Sixteen grandchildren. One, one deceased, that's uh, one of yours, I guess. That's Adam, huh? Mm -hmm. And uh, 14 great-grandchildren. Did Charlie and Paige, in, too? Yeah. In my, and in my younger years, I used to fish and hunt a lot. And uh, every year I'd go hunting with either my, my father-in-law, for uh, way back, I used to go with my with my father-in-law, George, George Tingey, and uh, we'd go hunting and fishing. He was my partner for until, up until he died. Really? And then I started hunting and uh, with Roy, my brother, we'd go down to uh, Soldier Summit and we had quite some hunting trips down, so we'd down there. Mm. And it's really in, interesting, some of them. And, uh, but, uh, 
now all my hobbies are just uh, bowling and golfing. <laughs> and then I still have ten kids once in a while. <laughs> and how old are you right now? <laughs> I'm now 82, and June 30th I'll be 83. I've, so told, I, I've told them the story of you getting that ski rope around your arm. Oh, yes. I, I don't know I've the details. Quite a few. But I had quite a few of them little things, but I couldn't get them all in. <laughs> <laughs> all your injuries? Oh, my injuries and all my <laughs> stupid mistakes I made. I, I, I kind of wanted a few of them to go. <laughs> oh, you didn't want to tell that one. <laughs> well, that was all right because it wasn't my fault. That was uh, the guy that was driving the boat. Uh, me and Roy was up skiing and we had this guy from Salt Lake, a lot, first time he'd ever went with us. And he was driving the boat and me and Roy was out skiing. And he gave me some slack on my thing and that rope come around and whipped around my arm and then he hit the gas oh, no. and he drug me. Uh, down there drowned me. Yeah, I was just almost drowned. The time I got that unhook and got in there, it was all bleeding. My muscles half tore out. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah, you still see the scar there. Oh, Look yeah. at that. Oh, yeah. Just about tore that whole arm off. Oh. Wow. So if you're going to tell Ben the secret of your success, or what, what advice would you give him? What be my advice? To live a long life? <laughs> I'll say be a success. I am not a success. <laughs> I, just, I just got by. And I've uh, enjoyed it every minute of it. Every minute of it. I, I wouldn't miss a bit of it right now. Even, even in my army time. I wouldn't. But at the time I, I got back, I, was, I didn't like it. <laughs> but now, I wouldn't. Uh, no, I'd give him. Just say, just try to live good and be happy a lot, laugh a lot. That's the main thing. And, and be good to other people, other people like you. And they, well, they, if, you, you, if they like you, they'll support you. And, and, uh, and it, it makes, a, makes a whole life for you, you know. Darlene had some advice. <laughs> get your education. You <laughs> college. You bet. You need you gotta it. have a good education. You know that. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Come on, man. Study keep harder. Your, keep your sports up. You're doing good in that, huh? Yeah, thanks. Well, that's great. <laughs> he is Mine doing too. very well. We always say Ben must have got it from his grandpa, so. Yeah. His love of sports. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I sure love sports. I, I really liked it. I, that's the only thing that kept me in school. If I hadn't had some sports, I, I think I, along the line, I think I'd have dropped out. But you know, them, them sports really, really kept me going. It had an incentive, had something to do. Yeah. <laughs> he asked Red a question about how, what I was like as a kid. So do you have any? <laughs> well, she was one of our one of our easier ones, really. Joanne was a little trouble child. She was uh, pretty set in her ways, and you couldn't change her. <laughs> and uh, we didn't have as much trouble with with you as a child. You uh, you was you was pretty pretty meek and mild. Nice all the time. <laughs> and you was very good, yeah. Uh, very good. Very good child. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted some dirt on me. And it's not just because you're here, that's a fact. Uh, when Joanne was here I told her she was she was my problem child. <laughs> <laughs> Colleen's, Colleen's my <laughs> biggest one now. <laughs> she, she is. Uh, over for her. <laughs> she is. Yeah. But you love them all, huh? Yeah, oh, you yeah. love They're every damn one of them. You love them all. Like I say, just just love every one of them. <laughs> yep. You better believe it. 
Well, thank Guess you. Guess what? You got one minute left, so you can tell one us minute, anything I... you want. There's one minute left on the tape. <laughs> I, ain't got, I ain't got nothing else to say. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> you want to tell us anything about your mom? We about heard, my mom? We heard a little bit about your dad, but mm -hmm. hard worker. Yeah. My mom was a, was a, a real wonderful little, little person. She, uh, she uh, was a little bit... Uh, she de hadn't gone to school much. She she was a little bit retarded in a way, uh, in a way because I think it was she was held down too much by her parents, uh, and because uh, she was sick a lot when she was real young, and they uh, back in them days they just they just didn't have the patience to let you go to school and all that. But sh she was a very wonderful person. She she was kind. She would, she would do anything for you, and uh, and uh, it was a sad thing when she had her heart attack and, and and then had her stroke and had to sit there and poor gal couldn't talk and it was a very troubling time. It really bothered me. Before that, she always liked to go on rides and on trips. Yeah, she, she did. Really she just, she just loved. She just loved to go on trips, but every time we'd go anywhere, that was, she was uh, a little bit afraid of like around a canyon or something. She'd say, "Don't you get too close over there, Dad. You keep, <laughs> you keep that car over there. <laughs> Don't you get too close to that edge, Dad." <laughs> <laughs> she liked... was so nervous about being close to a edge of a cliff or anything like that. She and Dad had tease her to say, "Well, yeah, we're gonna turn over here and turn off that." Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, just tease her, you know. Oh boy, but he, that was quite a thing. We used to have quite some times. Remember, we trip. took Bob to California and then brought him back, and your dad had dinner, uh, breakfast. At Oh, Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, we went into uh, the commercial. Or what was it? What? No, it was down in Las Vegas, wasn't it? It was Las Vegas. Yeah, it was in the... What? I can't remember where it was. We, anyway, it was a 90 cent, 98%, 97% <coughs> cent breakfast. Oh. <laughs> and uh, we went in and fixed just had our breakfast, and we started monkeying around with them.